Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to the Florida Department of Health in Manatee County. I'm Dr. Jennifer Bensey, the administrator here, and my staff and I thank you so much for joining us today. Um, before I formally introduce you to our special guest, Dr. John Armstrong, Florida State Surgeon General, I would like to highlight some of the many projects that all of us in this room have partnered on as we focus on today's theme, Healthiest Weight. The Robert Wood Johnson Foundation ranks Manatee County in the top third of the 67 counties in Florida regarding our health status. Still, we strive to improve ourselves daily. For the past three years, through a Centers for Disease Control and Prevention grant, our communities achieve efforts have been addressing nutrition, physical activity, and tobacco cessation in Manatee County as well as a Complete Streets grant through the American Public Health Association, which increased biking and walking throughout the county. The community also walked to the moon last year through our One Bay partnership. Also, Blake Hospital led the Healthy Choices restaurant menu campaign. Our schools have been focusing on playgrounds being open during weekends and holidays. Kiwanis of Bradenton, the county, the Boys and Girls Clubs, the Y, and many others held progressive marathons for our youth. We have a Food Policy Council addressing food deserts through farmers markets with EBT machines and community garden solutions. The Manatee Chamber of Commerce and Manatee School System have been strong advocates for worksite wellness efforts. Providers who are discussing healthy weight with their clients include the new residents from Manatee Memorial Hospital at our community clinics, such as Turning Points. Other key programs include Healthy Start and WIC. Of course, Manatee County Rural Health Services as our federally qualified health center network in the county is a vital link to educating many residents in our community. And a special thank you to the Board of County Commissioners who continue to greatly support policy and systems change for a healthier community, including our hosting the international rowing competitions in 2017 at the beautiful Benderson Park. Finally, let me thank my dedicated team of public health professionals who make a difference every day, whether here on this campus or in our community outreach initiatives. You truly are family. I want to say it really is a pleasure to work with the leaders and staff from all of these agencies daily to assure that Manatee County is a safe and healthy place to live, work, and play. Now, it's my pleasure to introduce to you our State Surgeon General to talk about his vision for a healthier Florida. First, let me tell you about his distinguished career. Dr. John Armstrong was appointed by Governor Scott as our State Surgeon General and Secretary of Health for the State of Florida in April of 2012. Previously, he was Chief Medical Officer of the USF Health Center for Advanced Medical Learning and Simulation, also known as CAMEL, Surgical Associate Professor of, of uh, sorry, a Surgical Director at, at the um, USF Health American College of Surgeons Accredited Education Institute <laughs> and Associate Professor of Surgery at the University of South Florida College of Medicine. Before this, he was the Trauma Medical Director at Shands at the University of Florida Medical Center in Gainesville. I also know that Dr. Armstrong was raised in a military family and has also served in the military. He and his wife, who is also a physician, are avid runners and parents to a young son who is also a competitive swimmer. Please join me in welcoming our State Surgeon General to Manatee County, Dr. John Armstrong. Thank you, Jennifer, for, uh, for navigating the variety of words that went into, uh, into those titles from Tampa. I'm delighted to be here with you all this afternoon in Manatee County. Sometimes I'm asked, well, why are you not in Tallahassee? Why are you moving about the state? And I think the answer is simple, because this is where the action is. This is where public health occurs. And so if you want to see the team 
doing the good work, you need to get out of Tallahassee and you need to move about the state. You know that we work each and every day to protect, promote, and improve the health of all people in Florida through integrated state, county, and community efforts. And it's really in that spirit that I am traveling about the state talking about the number one public health threat to our otherwise bright future. That is the challenge of weight. And think about where we are now and where we're going. Right now, only 35% of Floridians are at healthy weight. That means 65% are either overweight or obese. And on our current trend, two-thirds of Floridians will be obese by 2030. But what scares me the most is that six out of 10 babies born today will be obese or overweight before graduating from high school. Think about the graduation promenade. Is that the future that Florida's children, adults, and families deserve? You know, clearly not. We recognize that obese individuals live sicker and die younger, that members of families who are obese threaten the livelihood of families, and that the costs of managing the epidemic of obesity alone are staggering. If you look over the next 17 years at the costs of managing just four diseases alone that come from the disease of diabetes, whether it's high blood pressure, heart disease, diabetes, or arthritis, it's conservatively $34 billion. That's half a state budget. And the reality is that money that goes into managing those diseases cannot go into other things that we would like to have here in the great state of Florida. It really does become a zero-sum game. So we have a future right now that is not the future that Florida's children, adults, and families need, want, or deserve. What can we do about it? And that's the good news. We can do something about it. We can recognize that coming together in public-private partnerships, working with other state agencies, local governments, business, not-for-profit organizations, schools, hospitals, the faith-based community, you name it, working with interested groups in our communities, we can help inform Florida's kids, adults, and families about better choices for what they eat and how they're active in life. Let's reflect carefully on the environments that got us to this place. You know, 30 years ago, we really weren't talking about weight much, were we? So what happened over, over 30 years? Well, I'll tell you one thing. We had a strategy that went something like this. If you're fat, you need to eat less and exercise more. That was the strategy. We tripled the obesity rate with that strategy. So I'm going to suggest that strategy is flawed. And what we need to do instead is to think about the environments that are shaping choices, environments that make the unhealthy choice too easy. And those are environments that cut across food and beverage establishments, that cut across physical activity, schools, workplace, and, and messages. I just shared with you one message that clearly didn't work. So what if we acknowledge that weight challenge is something that all of us own? You see, even the 35% who are at healthy weight right now are always at risk for becoming overweight or obese. So everybody owns this. And what if we say, let's target the positive. Let's target healthy weight as opposed to lose weight. And let's reflect that the solution is going to be making healthy weight a team sport. That when we come together in communities, we find local solutions that will help people to make the healthy choice that will help the healthy choice to be the easier choice. Now we see a lot of examples uh, already around the state of how we're succeeding in reshaping environments. We have in our schools an interest in rethinking uh, what breakfast and lunch should be as part of a nutrition curriculum. Reflect that we spend a lot of money providing food for breakfast and lunch across Florida schools. Why is that only a mealtime? Why isn't that an opportunity to talk about nutrition? 
talk about fresh from Florida fruits and vegetables? Why isn't that an opportunity to link breakfast and lunch to our wonderful agricultural uh, economy here? Recognize that we export a great deal of agriculture, a great deal of fresh from Florida fruits and vegetables. We need to use it here and then export the rest. How can we build that into our schools? What about the workplace? Workplace wellness works. In fact, for every dollar put into a workplace wellness program that really stresses healthier options for eating and activity during the day, $5.50 is saved off of workers' compensation and health care costs. It's the reality. So what can we do to put some energy behind those initiatives? What we're going to do from the Department of Health is we're going to recognize communities and organizations uh, that meet criteria demonstrating commitment to those five environments being healthier. And stay tuned as we roll that program uh, out, but I suspect there will be uh, towns and cities right here in Manatee County that will want to jump right up and apply and that will receive that recognition. And similarly, I think there are organizations that are ready to do the same. And we can set the example for each other and constantly raise the bar for what it means to be healthy and to engage in healthy living. How about the food and beverage establishments? Uh, we're working to partner with the fast food industry. And some would say, oh my goodness, Aren't they the problem? Actually, think about it this way. If a third of Floridians get a meal a day at a fast food establishment, it's a touch point. How can we partner to get messages out at the counter? Maybe today I'm going to take in 100 calories less. Maybe the cost of the meal isn't in dollars alone. Maybe the cost includes those calories I'm going to have to deal with. And I really don't want to store calories. What can we do to help the fast food industry develop fast, healthy meals? Recognize that every fast food meal that's served takes about three minutes ultimately to prepare. Well, what if we took the great minds in the state, had a competition, and said, come up with fresh from Florida, fruits and vegetables, and some of your existing ingredients, and reconfigure it so you get a fast, healthy meal. It's work for the X Prize. And I think it's a real opportunity uh, here in our state uh, to do something uh, completely different. Physical activity environments, well, clearly here in Manatee, as I have uh, driven around, I've seen lots of opportunities. Uh, obviously, you're very proud of what you've done along the Bradenton waterfront. Uh, there are more opportunities to make walking easier and safer and to think about how to put more parks into various communities. Because what's happened over the past 30 years is uh, we've, we've really stopped walking. We've stopped walking across all elements of the lifespan. I know when I grew up, uh, I walked to school. You realize how rare that is anymore? If you're not uh, taking a bus, typically parents are driving you to school. We've taken that away from our kids, and unfortunately that habit then translates into adulthood. And similarly, we've made it difficult for adults to uh, to simply walk uh, the half mile to a grocery store. We don't have the sidewalks, we don't have the safety, and that's a real opportunity uh, to rethink our physical environments. And when I talk about that, I know some are saying, what about the dollar cost? Well, think about the dollar cost right now of not doing it, and think about what's going to happen to the economic vitality of the state if by 2030 two-thirds of adults are obese and nearly two-thirds of kids graduating from high school are obese or overweight. That's not a sustainable workforce. Uh, that is not uh, the way that we are going to continue to provide growth here in uh, Manatee or elsewhere across the state. And then the, the fifth environment on messaging, communities are expressing reminders about uh, healthy uh, living in a variety of different ways. Uh, yesterday I was in Sarasota County where they have an initiative called 5210, which is uh, about five servings of uh, fresh fruits and vegetables, no more than two hours of watching TV a night. You realize the average adult watches four and a half hours of TV. Over 25% of waking time is spent watching TV. Think about that for a moment. Um, one hour of physical activity, not exercise, but just physical activity. You know, 
part of the challenge with exercise is when people hear that word, they don't see themselves in it, right? When you hear the word exercise, you probably are thinking about uh, something that you see on the television <laughs> on any given Saturday or Sunday, some sporting event, or you're thinking about a gym, and we're talking about activity, getting up, getting moving. And then zero uh, sugary beverages, and uh, I would add uh, tobacco, though that's not part of the Sarasota program. I'm sharing that with you as an, as an example. I'm not saying that that's what needs to happen here in Manatee. Uh, I do think having reminders like that, that give internal metrics, that can be very, very useful. Um, another county to your south, Collier County, has a passport to wellness, which is just a very effective way of, of tracking activities. It turns out we do well as human beings if we measure our progress. That's just how we're hardwired. So why don't we embrace that? These are just some ideas. Uh, I would share with you right up front three things that every Floridian can do today and every day to achieve healthier weight. One is to substitute water for sugary beverages right here. And while we obviously are working to move to zero sugary beverages a day, I am a human being, and my reality is that I'm still gonna have a sugary beverage. I am, okay? But I'm not gonna have nearly as many as I might want. I'm going to substitute water. It works. The second is Florida fresh fruits and vegetables for breakfast and for lunch. We've got plenty of ways to have fruit instead of processed cereal in the morning. And for lunch, when you want the crunch from chips, consider carrots and celery. Now, having just said that, I realize that over here, at the end of this, this tray, this tray will be empty. And uh, we will have uh, other, other delicacies for members of the health department team to share. And then the third is, where possible, take the stairs instead of the elevator. And if you uh, are in a setting where you get a lunch break, uh, spend uh, 30 minutes at lunch uh, eating and conversing and 30 minutes walking. That gets back to some of the safe environments. If we start building these into our everyday routines, we stand a much better chance of succeeding. We aren't going to uh, succeed with a fad diet or fad exercise. You realize when you look at what happens to people when they do that, they get six months of success and then they rebound. And when they rebound, typically they rebound with more weight gained than they actually lost. And so that's not a good place to be. But we just have to acknowledge that we didn't get here overnight, that it's a sum of small choices over time, that when we take more in than we're active causes expansion. And the solution then is to rethink those small choices over time and build mutually supporting environments so that we can all succeed together. I'm really glad to see so many people here in the room uh, leaders from the community and members from the Florida Department of Health here in Manatee County. And at this point, I'd like to pause and uh, take any questions that you might have about healthiest weight. And I think even more importantly, hear what you think about this and how it is that you can add energy to this initiative here in Manatee County. I've met with Commissioner Putnam several times. He is very engaged in this. Um, particularly how to connect fresh from Florida fruits and vegetables into school breakfast and lunch, and further, how we can make the farmers markets more accessible. Right now, in too many of our communities, you have to go to the farmers market, typically at inconvenient hours and inconvenient locations. And what if we could create mobile farmers markets that actually come into communities? We have across our state a variety of food deserts, those are places where we don't have ready access to a grocery store that has fresh from Florida fruits and vegetables. Um, and instead of trying to think about how we're going to, for the moment, move supermarkets into those areas, why can't we take what we already have and simply make it more convenient for people who live in those communities as either a bridge or one part of the solution? I would encourage uh, any outreach here in, in Manatee uh, to agriculture uh, to see what creative ideas uh, exist and then to, uh, to make them happen. We know that babies uh, who are breastfed and their moms both benefit dramatically in terms of 
long-term health outcomes. So how is it that we can encourage a friendlier environment uh, for breastfeeding? And it's, it's not just in the workplace, it's actually out and about in the, in the community. Um, so we are strong supporters of, uh, of breastfeeding and uh, see that as an important piece to the puzzle of healthiest weight. And I want to articulate this approach is attacking everything all at once. Too often when there's a problem, we like to find the one piece that we think is the magic bullet and we put all of our energy into that. And if you reflect back over three decades, I'm sure you all remember uh, the demon salt, right? We've had demon fat, and we've had demon sugar. We, we had demon imbalance, <laughs> that's what we had. And so what we're doing instead is recognizing all of the pieces of the healthy weight puzzle all at once. And we're doing a lot of things simultaneously. We don't have time to, uh, to think about it differently because the clock is not on our side when it comes to our challenge with weight. I really appreciate your comment about workplace wellness and showing a way to align incentives. That's one of the many pieces that needs to be uh, part of this puzzle. And what we need to do is to take that example and share it across the state. So part of this initiative is collecting the things that are working out there and making it known to the rest of the state. Not every idea will work in every community. But uh, it turns out that there is a common denominator across things that work towards healthiest weight. And the more we share what's working, uh, the greater chance we have of getting some of those uh, in effect. I'm obviously pleased at what the Florida Department of Health here in Manatee County is doing for workplace wellness, an important partner with, with you and with uh, other employers uh, here in the county. We respect in Florida that uh, school curricula are led and managed by school boards and school superintendents and uh, the Department of Education at the state. That having been said, uh, we are working with interested school districts about a nutrition curriculum that takes nothing away from the existing curriculum. So use the time you have differently. For districts that have PE, Maybe it's time to move from physical education to healthy living and integrate into that messages on nutrition. Thinking again about breakfast and lunch differently, not as 30 minutes where kids sit and eat each meal, but instead as a part of a curriculum where five minutes is taken out for a nutrition message. Food coaches would be another idea here. Uh, I did have the opportunity to watch kids eat breakfast and lunch a few months back. I was very curious about what was happening. We seem to be delivering nutrition for breakfast and lunch and yet kids are gaining weight. So where was the disconnect? And what I saw was, uh, was probably most striking with first and second graders who were eating breakfast. So they were given a breakfast tray that had Florida's state drink, orange juice, in the right portion but with a tin top that's hard for a little first and second grader hands to take off. Bananas, great, but hard to peel with first and second grader little hands. And then what I call the wad of carbohydrate. It was hard for me uh, to distinguish exactly what it was, <laughs> but it, it looked like a bread roll and it was in a cellophane. Again, hard for kids to, to deal with that. So what was the outcome of this? I watched a whole lot of food thrown away. So I watched kids move in in an orderly fashion. I watched them sit down, it was all very well disciplined, and I applaud the teachers for how they, they managed it. But when it came to the engagement of the student with the food, I didn't see what, what I thought I was gonna see. And so that's where this idea of food coaches uh, really does come from. And um, I think we have a real opportunity just to rethink what's happening. I'm not talking about extending the school day. I'm not talking about changing any other pieces of the curriculum. Simply saying where there is existing time, why not think about it differently? Exciting initiative that I've heard about in several counties does school announcements uh, every morning with a tailored nutrition message. 
It's become very popular in one county. It moved from elementary to middle school and now high school. Integrated, so same topic, but delivered in a, an age-appropriate way. So successful that the local newspaper said, you know, we like this. We want to actually start printing these for adults. And what I am most interested in is the results. How is this bending the weight curve in Florida? They actually were able to demonstrate a reduction in weight across uh, elementary, middle, and high schoolers within a year of this initiative. Now there's a lot that goes into healthy weight, make no mistake about it, and you have to be somewhat careful with attribution. But the reality is nothing else had really changed in the community except people were now talking nutrition and they were thinking about it differently. Now I think some of you realize that I did borrow uh, Jennifer's talent at the state health office for a period last fall. And um, I, I want you to know that uh, I have no plans uh, to spirit her away uh, permanently. It's exciting to come into a community where there is the kind of synergy for health that I see here in Manatee. And I need to make sure that uh, we don't disrupt uh, the ecology that clearly is moving uh, health forward. Any other questions or comments? Well, let, let me share with you then um, some final thoughts. We've launched this initiative with some very clear goals. So this isn't being done um, blindly. We have two overarching goals. One is to bend the weight curve in Florida by 5% over the next four years. That is a remarkably audacious goal and yet I am convinced we have the talent in the state to do that. We have the case for the future of our children, for the present of our adults, the business case for families and for companies and communities. This makes sense. And we're able to track this and report these results. And our twin goal with this is that we want to be the number one healthiest weight state in the nation. When we started this initiative, we were number 19. Just this past August, we were number 12. Can you do something this audacious? Yes, you can do something this audacious when you realize it's not a top-down approach, it's not regulating carbonated sugary beverages, it's about messaging in communities and making our environments promote the healthier choice, making the healthier choice the easier choice. So we're number 12 now in healthiest weight state. We want to be number one. We want to beat Colorado. And I've already told the health officer in Colorado, we're taking it. Because here in Florida, we know a little bit about being number one. And, and we really deserve to be number one. I want to thank you all again for, uh, for being here this afternoon. Uh, this is a very important conversation, uh, and I hope this is uh, part of a continuing dialogue as we work together to make Florida the healthiest state in the nation. Thank you very much.